you know, sometimes the parents are like, yeah, I'll let, I'll let him go over there. But then if you're that 14 year old kid, if you don't grind 12 hours a day, even if you're like beating some of the people in the house, if you're not practicing harder than them, they're like, see ya, get out. Yeah. So you were like, I've got to grind for two years in this house and then maybe they'll let me join the team and then maybe I can That's play crazy. in a televised match. It was Dude. insane. Um. I was walking by my house the other day and went down a street I've never been down before and there was like an academy for esports. Mm-hmm. And it used to be, I know with StarCraft in particular, there were teams and they'd live in the same apartment and they'd yeah, just yeah. have rows of computers. That's still a thing, yeah. They'd There's like reality like, shows about that that Monte Cristo was telling me about. Like Dave said in the morning, they'd get up and they'd play, they'd just be training for hours and hours it's and so hours. Awesome. They'd live with a coach in there and he'd be like overseeing. You they, see have a chef, they have a chef and everything. Like they have, they have like, in StarCraft Rudor especially, like it was, I think the most competitive environment for gaming there ever was in Korea. Like, they would have kids, basically the, the team, say like SKT, right? SK Telecom has a team, mm-hmm. um, and they're T1 now, but at the time, SK Telecom finds this guy on the ladder, right? Where everyone's practicing, 1v1ing, trying to get the most points to get noticed. Like the, the, like, the ladder's like your ranking, like you go up or down like, based on your points, like your ELO, whatever you want to call it. Some guy gets noticed because a pro gamer hits him a few times when he's just playing games, and he messages him like, hey, you're pretty good. You want to play some more games with me? Coach sees it, and he finds out, oh, this kid's 14. Can I get your mom's phone number? You want to come live in our house? Sketch. That's the and only then, sport where you can ask that question. Yeah. And it's not <laughs> shit talking. Like some then, basketball then the, the, You know, sometimes at the time StarCraft was so legitimate. It was on television. It, people were making, you know, literally thousands of dollars a month. Uh, salary plus huge prize money if they did well. Um, you know, sometimes the parents are like, yeah, I'll let, I'll let him go over there. But then if you're that 14-year-old kid, if you don't grind 12 hours a day, even if you're like, beating some of the people in the house, if you're not practicing harder than them, they're like, see ya, get out. Yeah. So you were like, I've got to grind for two years in this house and then maybe they'll let me join the team and then maybe I can That's play crazy. in a televised match. It Dude, was insane. Um, I play this game Valorant. Wolf knows Valorant. You know right. what Valorant is. But it's like, it's a, it's currently a up and coming esports game. Mm-hmm. And I play a lot of Valorant. I play it a lot. I mean, to the point where my YouTube's suffering because of how much Valorant I play. <laughs> okay, I'm Diamond Elo, which is like, there's Diamond… There's Immortal and then there's Val- like the um, Radiant, which is the highest. And I'm pretty good at Valorant now. I, I play a lot. You know, I told You're you. You're much I'm, better than me. I play a lot. So I'm pretty f-ing good. More, better than the average person. I'm Diamond in Korea, which is like, like even more hardcore than other servers. Mm. And the thing about this is I played… You know who Bunny Bunny is? Yeah. Overwatch. So we got an invitation from this ex-Overwatch uh, pro player. This guy is just talented at video games. He came… For an in-house scrim, which is just like the boys or and girls, whatever. But uh, we were playing like 5v5 in-house. Mm-hmm. Like not with random people. And this guy got on. He is so talented at the video game. He was an ex-Overwatch player. He comes on Valorant. And he's been playing Valorant a lot lately. He just wiped the floor with me who's been dedicating like eight, nine hours a day to playing just this game. Just because he's a naturally fucking, gifted gamer? Just because he's a naturally gifted Gamer, and he was just an ex-pro at another game. He comes on this game and just wipes us what, out. Is it like finger speed? I don't know. It depends on the game, Team you speed? know. Yeah. Team speed. Like for StarCraft, finger speed is super important yeah. because uh, you have to control large groups of army uh, at, at once on a map, and then you have to. You might have a drop ship going into your opponent's base at the same time your opponent drops into your base, and you're trying to control everything, and you're trying to make units, and you're trying to make sure all your workers are mining and, and getting money. So that's like really hand speed, super important for a game like StarCraft. Then you have to be smart, but Valorant's like Valorant, it's almost time. like Twitch reaction speed. Hand-eye um, coordination. Hand-eye coordination. I mean, you, it's like for gamers, for like top, top gamers, it's like you have it or you don't sometimes. It's not always like that. And some people can, you know, grind for 10 years and then suddenly get there. But you have to start really young, which is not something I recommend because a lot of people try for 10 years to be a top player and then have wasted a lot of their lives. Well, I guess it's kind of like being a basketballer or any other athlete yes. as well. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to dedicate so much time to that sport to try to become a professional. And if you don't get there, that's like, yeah, 10 years of your life, you're not getting back. Hope you enjoyed the clip. If you did, listen to the full episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And make sure to subscribe to this channel, Dive Studios, and put those notifications on. Hit that bell. Boop, boop, boop.